Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, absolutely fascinating video today. We're gonna check out the channel capturing Christianity with his video. I might have discovered the end of Islam. Dot dot dot. 1400 years of Islam, but I'm sure capturing Christianity will debunk the whole doctrine and lead to the end of Islam with his findings. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Could the Islamic dilemma actually end Islam? For those of you that don't know, here is the dilemma. The Quran claims sure. that Jesus was given the Injil, which is basically an Arabic word for gospel. Let's stop it right there and read. Then in the footsteps of the prophets, we sent Jesus, son of Mary, confirming the Torah revealed before him. And we gave him the gospel, the Injil, containing guidance and light and confirming what was revealed in the Torah, a guide and a lesson to the God-fearing. So remember here, God, Allah, gave a gospel to Jesus. Just remember this and let's proceed. However, if the Injil refers to the Gospels as we know them today, as Christians know them today, then core Christian beliefs like the divinity of Christ and the Trinity directly contradict Islamic teachings. So if- Yeah, exactly. So you basically just said it yourself. The Quran claims that a Gospel has been given to Jesus, a Gospel, the Injil, that he preached to the children of Israel. And then you're showing John. Do you think that Jesus back then at his time had the gospel of John with him, the gospel of Mark, Matthew or Luke? Of course not. You already know that those gospels have been written after the time of Jesus. Moreover, those gospels are biographical of sorts. Of course, we don't know how much we can trust them, but nevertheless, they are supposedly biographies of Jesus from his 30s to 33 years old, of course. So now again, back to the Quran. The Quran simply claims that Jesus preached the Injil that was given by God to him. So was a autobiography written by Mark given to Jesus? Of course not. Therefore, all that he is doing here is creating a straw man and then debunking that straw man. This is a huge fallacy and this is not what the Quran claims. Let's proceed. So, if Jesus was given the Injil from God and the yeah. Injil contradicts Islam, then Jesus was given a revelation from God that literally refutes Islam. Hence, Islam is false. A lot of Muslims so yet again, just use your brain for once. I know that you believe that three is one, but please try to hang with this logic. Try to understand what you are claiming here. You're reading that God sent Jesus with a gospel. Please answer, do you then believe that the biography of Mark, Luke, John, etc. was that gospel that was sent to Jesus? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever, of course, and therefore we have to conclude that the Injil has been lost. It is absolutely congruent with the Quranic claim. Actually see the difficulty here and say that the original Injil, which must have been Islam friendly, was either lost or corrupted. But this view actually runs into so major that. issues. Not only does it conflict Why? with other Islamic teachings about Christians during the time of Muhammad, having access to a written Injil, it conflicts with documented it history. Does not. The Islamic dilemma as I see it, as I understand it, is basically yeah. the difficulty of defining the Injil in a way that is not problematic, or at least doesn't lead to obvious falsehoods. Yeah, he ultimately admitted that it's his understanding, and his understanding is obviously lacking here because he somehow assumes that the Quran claims that Jesus was running around with the Bible, with those new Gospels. And this would be, of course, impossible because we know that the early Christians had no Bible. The Bible was later canonized, ultimately through the church fathers of the Orthodox Catholic Church. So even the disciples of Jesus weren't reading Matthew, Mark, and Luke. For example, let's look at the temple cleansing. So the synoptics okay. place the temple cleansing event toward the end of Jesus' ministry during like the last week. And then John puts it toward the beginning. The McGrews and other scholars. Yeah, on that note, this is really cool here. You see Jesus running around with the whip and whipping the Pharisees. Yeah, there's something that Christians nowadays unfortunately ignore. 
They see Jesus as this benevolent hippie figure almost that never got violent and always was very peaceful, but here you see him <laughs> just smashing everybody, brother. <laughs> Other scholars have suggested a not too implausible harmonization here, namely that there were two temple cleansing events. Nothing in the text themselves or in history makes this solution like wildly implausible. So it, it, like if you think that historically Jesus cleansed the temple once, then plausibly he could have done it a second time, like on a different occasion. But none okay, of so the solutions that I've seen so far in response to the Islamic dilemma, and I've investigated at least seven so far from various scholars, none of them are even remotely plausible. Every solution is either inconsistent with other Islamic passages or it faces serious inconsistencies with known history. Okay, so basically you use the inconsistencies of the Bible here as some sort of proof because they don't know if Jesus went in there twice and whipped the Pharisees or only once. But meanwhile, we have so many other contradictions in the Bible, such as Judah's death, for example. We don't know if he jumped off a cliff or hung himself. The numbers of animals in the ark, for example, you can look up Genesis 6.19 and Genesis 7.2 for that. And even God's nature, if you look into Exodus 33.20, for example, you'll find, but he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. This is God speaking here, allegedly. But then in Genesis 32.30, we find, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. So now you see me, now you don't. Christian theology is full of contradictions, but somehow he claims that the Injil is contradictory just because it doesn't agree with Mark, Matthew, and Luke. Great job. Let's now look at one definition or interpretation of the Injil, and this one comes yeah. from Sunnis. So they say that the Quranic Gospel, the Injil, is this tangible written scripture that God revealed to Jesus, but then it got corrupted somehow. The problem is that this interpretation clashes with both the Quran and with history. Let's look no. at history first. So historically, there is no evidence at all that Jesus ever received or wrote down a physical book called the Injil that is separate from the four gospels that we have in our New Testament. And even within what? Islam- Okay, now he's just obviously blatantly lying here. What are you even saying? He's making the claim that we have no evidence whatsoever that something else was revealed to Jesus, something other than the Gospels of, yet again, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. This, of course, ridiculous. We know for a fact, historically as well, if you will, that Jesus Christ didn't preach those Gospels. This would be an impossibility because those Gospels have been written down after he died in Greek. But now, as an honest, believing person, you must believe in the prophets as well, right? Abraham, Noah, Moses, etc. So those people received revelation of God as well. Maybe written down, maybe it was just vocal, we don't know. But matter of fact, they had some sort of revelation. So therefore, there's absolutely no contradiction here whatsoever. Even Christians do believe that Jesus was sent by God. Your Bible says this. And therefore, what was he sent with? There was a specific message, right? There was the good news. But that good news was not the autobiography, the supposed autobiography, about Jesus Christ. And this is what Christianity ultimately became. It became the religion about Jesus, but not the religion of Jesus. The tradition itself, you won't find consistent claims or any evidence at all suggesting that Jesus was given some distinct written text like in the way that Muhammad received the Quran. If there- Yeah, again, Strawman, was he given the Bible that you have nowadays? Of course not, man, stop lying. Were, we'd actually expect to find some sort of like defined theological framework within Islam about how this book was transmitted and why it supposedly disappeared or got corrupted why? somehow. But instead, Islamic sources are either vague or completely silent on that this That is ridiculous. Issue. So this is absolutely ridiculous, of course, because we have so many religions nowadays. And guess what? Most of the early manuscripts are lost. The same applies to Christianity as well. You don't have the earliest manuscripts. Your gospels are written in Greek, a language that Jesus did not speak, let alone his disciples. Look at it. If you look into Buddhism, for example, most sayings of the Buddha 
are lost. So we don't have direct access to the revelations of the Buddha any longer. And therefore, there is a religion being formed called Buddhism. And then you hear about Buddha. It is the same principle in Christianity yet again. Scholars will admit that even your own Bible is corrupted. Look into the library of Nahamadi, for example. There you see many Gospels that didn't make it into the canonization process of your Bible. Your Bible is simply a compiled bunch of books. You don't have access for the thousandth time to the earliest sources. And therefore, now you assume that somehow you must have access to the Injil. You must have direct access to what Jesus has preached. No, you don't. But it gets the point. worse. Like, and I mean so <laughs> much worse. When your you video dive gets into worse. early Christian okay. history, you'll see debates over like which books should actually make it into the New Testament canon. So there's different gospels, that is different fantastic. letters and other writings. And that these were fantastic. all in circulation at the time. They were That's very amazing. Okay, sorry guys. I have to interrupt this video a billion times because this guy is a straw man machine ultimately. Look in the background here. What do you see? Concilium Nicaenum. What does that mean? It is the Council of Nicaea. Earliest councils. Okay, when was this council? Look it up, man. So as you can see, the Council of Nicaea was in 325 AD, 300 years after Jesus Christ. This is where they are compiling the Bible. This is where they decide if Mark, Matthew, and Luke should make it into the Bible at all. And you now make the claim yet again that somehow those Gospels are something that Jesus was sent with. How stupid is this? How retarded is this? Honestly, God sends the gospel of Mark about Jesus to Jesus for Jesus to preach his autobiography? This is absolutely laughable, man. Wow, so should actually make it into the New tier. Testament canon. So there's different gospels, different letters, and other writings. And these were all in circulation at the time. There were yeah, very heated exactly. intellectual discussions about which texts are actually authoritative. But here's the thing. Like in all of these <laughs> debates, no one ever mentioned a gospel written by Jesus himself. Christians never yeah, claim exactly. that Jesus left behind some written document, much less like a divinely revealed book to him. The four canonical gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, were always seen as the best accounts of Jesus' life and teachings, written by his followers or those that were close to him. If there had... <laughs> yeah, and there you have it, man. You just debunked yourself for the thousandth time here. You just said yourself that those gospels are about the life of Jesus. Supposedly. It is not the teaching of Jesus. This is what they had access to 325 years after Jesus Christ. And therefore, they compiled a bunch of books. However, the original teaching of Jesus Christ got lost. Why would I care now that the church fathers didn't think that there was an original teaching? Yeah, duh. Christianity didn't even try to get back to the origin and preserve the original core teaching of pure monotheism. Quite the opposite. They went on and invented things such as the Trinity. It is absolutely laughable. You simply see how the Roman Empire comes up with certain conceptualizations and creates a new religion. Of course, those people didn't care about the true message of Jesus, which was pure monotheism, like all the other prophets. But let that aside, right? You said there that the Gospels are written by followers <laughs> of Jesus Christ or the people closest to them. This is insane that you don't know that allegedly. Of course, you're lying, man. The Gospels are written in Greek, first and foremost. So did Jesus speak Greek? No, he did not. Did the followers speak Greek? Of course not. Most of them were poor fishermen, illiterates, 100% during that time. So therefore, how would they speak an intellectual language like Koinic Greek back in those days? They did not. So therefore, you look into the Gospels and you find out that they are written by anonymous authors. And therefore, we name them Mark, Matthew, and Luke. Do you really think <laughs> that people that lived in Palestine <laughs> 2,000 years ago were called Mark, Matthew, and Luke, and John, and what not? You have no direct sources about Jesus Christ's life, let alone the direct revelation that was sent to him by God. Had been some sort of Islamic friendly scripture like the Injil, as this view suggests, this it so would have been front and center in these canon disputes. A book oh, directly right. authored by Jesus himself or something that was revealed to him would have been for Christians the most authoritative text 
imaginable. So yet again, another fallacy, an appeal to authority fallacy, where we assume that the church fathers back then wanted, of course, to preserve the religion. That is just a claim that you cannot back up whatsoever. Those were just fallible men and they compiled a bunch of books. As I already mentioned, in the Nash Hammadi library, we found many gospels that have been either neglected or willingly excluded of the Bible. So you just have a bunch of guys 300 years after Jesus Christ deciding which book goes in and which one does not. And they're all guided by the Holy Spirit, but somehow they have a dispute. And oh, please tell me, where is the argument? But there is absolutely no mention of such a thing in early Christian writings or in the discussions about the canon, which very- Oh, what? There is no such thing 300 years after Jesus? It very, very strongly Strange. contradicts this idea huh. that Jesus received some a book that later got corrupted. Now, Muslims might argue at this point that this is an argument from silence because it relies on an absence of evidence. Just because early Christian writings don't actually mention the Injil, that doesn't mean that it never existed. Muslims might claim that the book was lost or corrupted over time and that the lack of references to it doesn't necessarily disprove the Islamic view. In response, not all arguments from silence are actually bad. That's a misunderstanding. You've got to look at each one case by case. The claim that Jesus received a divinely revealed scripture, the Injil, would be massive for Christians. If that book ever actually existed, it would have sure, been like the cornerstone of Christian teaching. It wouldn't have just been mentioned or corrupted yes. as a side book. There is no trace Very of true. any book like this at all, not in any early Christian writings, not in the intense debates over which books belonged in the New Testament. There is no mention of any book like this anywhere. All right, guys, I'm going to cut off the video here. I'm going to give you my commentary now because it's kind of useless. It's always the same quote unquote argument, but doesn't lead anywhere. Of course, there's no introspective perspective whatsoever. They don't look into their own scriptures and point out their fallacies and contradictions. No, it is all evil, evil Islam because they simply don't understand what the Quran claims here in the first place. Yet again, the Quran says that something has been revealed to Jesus. Even if we assume that it wasn't written down, that is a possibility as well, of course. Maybe the Injil wasn't physically written down. Maybe it was just a revelation to Jesus. And this is what he then orally preached. This is a possibility as well. So therefore, hey, it wasn't written down. And guess what? Christians must admit this as well, because Christians cannot assume that Jesus was sent with the Bible, because he was not. Therefore, he preached something, obviously, that you don't have access to. As I mentioned already 10,000 times here, the Nashramadi library, there you found, for example, the Gospel of Thomas. And there you had a bunch of sayings of Jesus Christ written down. So this could have been something from the Injil. There you have further evidence for the Injil, for revelation that was sent to Jesus. And you're absolutely correct here. He mentioned this would be huge for Christians. Yes, it should be huge for Christians. Therefore, why don't you look into the Gospel of Thomas, for example, and why was it excluded of the Bible? You should ask your church fathers, why did you exclude the Gospel of Thomas, for example, from our scripture? Is it not authentic? What do you think? And how do you conclude then that those people are truly the authority over Jesus. But this is really what you do. You have a council. You have an authority over Jesus now. You're not listening to your prophet because guess what? You don't have any scripture, any writings from your prophet. So there was an effort to get rid of it. You really think it's so hard to get rid of certain evidences that some people in power do not want to see. Even by your own standard, you do believe that Jesus Christ was crucified by the Roman Empire. And somehow later on, the Roman Empire adopts Christianity. Christianity with writings about Jesus, supposedly. Christianity with the concept of the Trinity. All of it 300 to 400 years after the fact. How does this make sense? Of course it does not, because you are following the Roman Empire, you're following Paul, you're following the church fathers, and what they said about Jesus, and what they've been guided towards to by the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ preached nothing but monotheism, and so did all the prophets before him. Look into your own Bible and you will find stories over and over again of prophets sent by God, warning the people from idolatry. They're calling them to the worship of one God alone. Pure monotheism. This is the ever-repeating story in the Old Testament. 
But now somehow Jesus Christ goes against that. It doesn't make sense, of course. Jesus Christ, Isa, Isus in Greek, preached monotheism, warned his people from idolatry, and this is Islam. And hence, Jesus was a Muslim. All right, guys, and that's it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support my work. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. It truly helps a lot. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>